Ladies and gentlemen, how you all doing? This is Con Ulrich. This is Ryan Roo. Hello, hello, hello. And folks, do not adjust your sets. We are on the map of Shechedron. Ryan, who do we have? What are they bringing? On the left hand side in the blue, we have Luna playing Ski Eager with a Maverick Income. Right hand side in the red, we have Noob Ward of playing Task Force Butler with a Vanguard Income. I'm sorry, I was completely distracted by the beauteousness that is the Yacht Panzer Gazelle down south. <laughs> mm. I have to love this tank destroy again. It's like the pack track that just is really not stellar. It's the, the door knocker on the back of a. Of a the pack, pack track. track you have at home. Exactly, exactly. Not, it's not the pack track that you you know you want to marry, but it's the, it's the pack track you see on the side. So. Yeah. But yeah, it's been a real interesting ski acres. I mean, they've definitely been power creeped a little bit in regards to being like the infantry type, like elite infantry style division. Mm -hmm. But a division I personally like quite a lot, and they still have some pretty good tricks up their sleeves. So it'd be curious to see how they do actually do because if we just take a look up north actually a pretty heavy investment up north here from mr noob i, I really you think so i think i see the m10 tank destroyer down south i see mortars i see m8s and cavalry scouts yeah there's more units up there but are that is that really that mm. i think it's more just all the it's more of the all the armor because that's still like pretty expensive just all those tanks especially considering now the american runs of all the fancy 50 cows. They're actually getting the bloody gun jam on T-34. So you will be able to actually get up here, secure both flags, because Luna's has been quite passive with his northern defense here. That's very down, passive. Because down south, he has an artillery strike coming in right now. He's going to try to take out that entire hillside. Uh, Yacht Panzer Gazelle engages the M8. He's not going to do well, but he does take out the, the stovepipe, which is still pretty positive here. Mm-hmm. And why those cavalry scouts over here aren't going to be pushed back or seen just yet. If you look down to the south, there's a rifle leader, there's the M10, and then there's, well, I have now listed everything that's on you know, the southern side of the map, really. <laughs> so the rest of it's gone. And then looking at the lung position as well, Luna's actually going for an, uh, kind of an aggressive push here, bringing out some ski acres. I mean, of course, the ski acres, it's the entire division. Also, mainly just the armor as well to back him up here. So he's getting good trades, and honestly, these Yag Pants of the Gazelles early on have really proved their worth, which is quite, quite fun to see because the bloody 15 points. Yes, they are, and they're actually deadly to pretty much anything over here on the American side, which is quite funny. Mm hmm. Um, Stuart, of course, getting a little bit frisky. Cavalry scouts, of course, moving in, but and the the Yag Panzer Gazelle just kind of prances away, and kind of encourages, I guess, you know, that that Panzer Boysha uh, was at the Anand Fiatzik. Yeah, the Anand Fiatzik moving on up as long well as that captured boy to thirty four. Yeah, yeah. Uh, CGMC. Okay, so I think right now. The fear is, okay, I don't want to see another artillery strike. I want this thing to die. So now it's a CGMC on the map. Not just good for killing PVIs, also good for... Ooh, lightning is striking oh, wow. once. Oof. Wow, it's actually... Was that the anti-air it's got it? Yeah, I, I think so. I don't think that was oh, yeah, the T-34. Oh, yeah, it's Yeah, he does get the anti-37 mils, which is pretty good. Because you don't get a whole lot of anti-air for Ski Eager, but... Just enough of those 37s in a 1v1 match is enough to keep you going. Also, unfortunately, I mean, we have a neighbor, neighbor buffer on the map, but unfortunately, he's, he's aiming at something that's a little bit less efficient. I wish he had dropped it about 500 meters and gone after the actual town itself. He could have absolutely ex you know, eradicated everything that's there. Yeah. I, th I don't know where you're just trying to go for a, you know, you might not know it's only a 60 millimeter mortar, but still, like just hitting that front line position, moving up his ski acres, you could pretty easily get at least one or two of those flags. I'd like to think by the rapidity of the shells, you should be able to figure that part out, but maybe that's just me being, again, I see everything. Uh, Marauder, in the meantime, this thing comes out and he's dropping a hefty amount of bombs. So that lung is going to be, well, kind of a bit of a coughing fit, let's call it. Mm -hmm. That's a very good strike here from Noob. Doesn't get a whole lot of kills, but enough to force Luna off out of position. He doesn't have a whole lot to follow up with, unfortunately, but it's mainly just buying him time to 
bring up reinforcements because it still sucks that he doesn't have his lung completely under control. But the main thing is just making sure he doesn't lose the flag. True, 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 true. And down south, Command Sherman being brought on in because with the Command Sherman, theoretically, theoretically, that should be enough to clean up the hilltop. Mm hmm. Because there's not a whole lot of anti tank on the Ski Acre Pioneer troops here. And the rifles are pretty decent. They're beefy squads. You got all the semi autos, which helps you out quite a bit. So, really, Noob just needs a little bit of fire support to maybe push this hill. That's true. Unfortunately, in the meantime, we have discovered that lightning will strike twice, or at least if when you're an F5B, you will. Um, and wait a second. Ooh, I didn't realize all the Task Force Butler stuff is actually in a phase. I mean, that makes perfect sense being a Vanguard division, but that's kind of surprising to see that that's... Hmm. Yeah, it's very front-loaded here. He yeah. does at least have one C phase card infantry, but yeah, he only has that one B phase card, so all his really good infantry... You know, it's in short supply early on, so it's going to be very important for him to you know, really take advantage of the next three minutes or so he has left of this. It's not a huge income advantage, but enough to matter. Exactly. Exactly. Meanwhile, lungs are going to go. Have a, we have a pioneer that gets super close to an HMG and then just kind of surrenders. Uh, and meanwhile, an M10 tank destroyer between the Panzer Poitia and the Yacht Panzer, are, they're both going to lose. No Very good use of airstrike so far from Noob. True. Like, when they're not getting blown up from the 37 mil, he's actually doing a good job of denying these pushes, especially with how these hilltop fights are. A lot of the troops are very bunched up, so it makes it perfect for a good old American bombing. Curiously enough, the Zimbo for being brought really close to the front lines. I think maybe he heard us and will be engaging with a much more concentrated barrage soon. Thing is... Snipper it takes forever to reload. Mm-hmm. Especially when you're having to like load it on the back of a truck, it also takes time with the repositioning here. And still, like Luna doesn't have a whole lot of forces here to do a counter attack. He really only has two infantry and it's like near the front line. The other Ski Jaeger is more just in defense. You want a bigger blob of dudes. But you know, unfortunately, you know, when Ski Jaeger, all your troops are for the most part pretty well. Never mind, he got 20 points of Jaegers. But he still needs more guys on the front to actually, you know, push the town. I think right now he's more panicked about the southern side, which I, I get. I think that's one of those moments of your opponent shouting at you, so you shout back. Um, but I don't agree with maybe the, the heavy investment of a couple martyrs and a T-34 and all this other stuff. I feel like it could have been accomplished a little more. This contained down south. Yes, you lost it for now, but contain. Yeah. Yeah, I think coming to B phase as well, just getting a neighbor for down south or doing runders, you just barrage a hell off that hill, and then you just go up here for ski acres. I mean, that's exactly what they're built for. Exactly. Exactly. Cross country ski acreing. Mm hmm. Uphill both ways. Exactly. As In or, snow. or as Robin Williams would call it, Norwegian drive by. <laughs> Cowboy Scouts in the meantime though I mean if we're, if we're on an upper position these guys don't like skiing uphill and you can see that happening right about now but we are going to see okay alright so another day before for strike this time going after an HMG um okay and a couple of Sturm Ski Jaegers being brought on in okay so I'm going to watch this because I feel like he's going to go move forward and realize oh I should have engaged the other one to the northwest of this because he's got to be able to see some of this. Yeah. Yeah, I really do not like his neighbor effort strikes at all. Like, he's trying to use it for, you know, we do see people to use neighbor effort strikes and anti aircraft counter battery, which does work if you're planning to go heavy, you know, in aircraft investment here. But just racing him, trying to, you know, knock out individual units when you just have such a huge clump of nasty guys here. It really has not paid off here at all for Luna. That's a very, very gentle way of putting it. Now, down south, there was a um, GU-87 that came into cluster that command Sherman unto death. And there's a 172 Mike that's going to be kind of dropping us more off map. But for the moment, it, there's a, a odd kind of quietus kind of coming across the, the map. Or quietus, actually, it's probably how most people would say it. But you know, <laughs> an, odd, an, odd, an odd moment is of, of, of peace. Mm-hmm. 
a calm before the storm, you could say, as we head into B phase. This soft map strike here from Luna isn't also not going to get a whole lot. Once again, just really poor timing of the artillery, especially with off map and rocket artillery. You're wanting to be using them to, you know, clear up a position so you could push through. Or here he's just trying to use them as, you know, I want to pinpoint kill one or two things. And really I want, well, heavy artillery for that. Which Giga doesn't have a whole lot of, but you don't want to be really racing your precious neighbor rail for an off-map strikes just during the S. Well, and, and especially when you don't have anything to kind of consolidate the position moving forward. I'm not going to say exactly. ironically, but that artillery barrage just now did kill two people. I'm, I'm not suggesting that was the stellar mm. part of it, but regardless. Um, and the the town is the push into the town is happening, and it is they do not care. M8 goes down, Stromsky Yeager kind of you know, schlumping on through and, and picking things off. I don't know if he's going to be able to really get to the steward, but that would be quite amusing if that steward goes down. Mm. And that one machine gun team which <laughs> didn't get killed, I see it being alive has proven to be a huge pain. It's got a perfect line of sight down the road, and it is completely suppressing the Ski Yeager troops, the 60mm mortars, to provide good fire support. And it even brought enough time for Noob to bring up an off map artillery of his own. So Luna is definitely going to be evicted off this dance floor here quite quickly. Probably going to be the case. Actually, definitely going to be the case. But, uh, you know, it's its own time here. Martyrs in the meantime, onto the lungs, starting to engage the M10 tank destroyer. And I was going to say, it probably goes about the way you might expect. But no, the martyr picks him off at range. And that's kind of, a, and I guess, the thing that we don't really talk about very much either, is the fact that the martyr is still a points-efficient call-in for a lot of divisions. Doubly so, I would argue, for the Ski Jaeger, who just doesn't have those MBTs to kind of call upon. Yeah, they're good, they're cheap, you... Supplement Rao and the defense here, especially when you're just, you know, lobbing shells at long range. Like, Skiega has, like, a pretty damn good little, like, tank anti-tank tab. It's perfect for 1v1s. You've got enough cheap medium stuff. I guess the one problem, as we've seen with last match, they don't have a whole lot of super cheap light spam. They have the Agpanzer Gazelles, but that's really it. Oh, no, 2 2 ones. So you do have some, but not like infantry, auto cannon, fire support, which is always good to have. Also, the Marauders are finding themselves uh, alone, flying through green fields with the sun on their face. Um, one has already perished. The second one has taken an awful lot of fire and might, and might, just might, be entertained by that other BF-109? No, BF-109 backs away. Seen a lot of off map up north. We're seeing the counter off map from Luna and the second strike here from Ronsom Noob. So, really, the front line is not going to be going anywhere anytime soon as this town just gets completely leveled to smithereens. <laughs> but not to be outdone, a Panzer truck comes on in and picks off that steward before it happens, screaming, I, I, I have a purpose! Uh, before probably vanishing in fire along with everything else. Saboteurs in the meantime, sitting behind the front lines. Ooh, wait, one shell takes out two T-34s. Whoa! That's... That's a pretty lucky hit right Yeah, because that really knocks out a lot of the firepower for this northern push. And that's going to be quite important now, because as we get into B and C phase, Lord of Noobs, you know, units really start to peter off. He does have some Maki Sarge and Rallies, but they're not really going to be up to snuff compared to the, you know, the... Frankly, rather good rifle late grod. Well, especially when you have one car that's 32 troops over here, even in C phase. Yeah, that's pretty nuts. Looking down south real quick, a resurgent push is going to see, oof, M4A1 getting picked off over here again. Those martyrs proving their weight in, I would say, gold, but how about platinum? That's always actually pretty, mm -hmm. pretty nice as well. Trip steel? Yeah, exactly, exactly. But not welded, um, just cast. <laughs> But we're seeing um, one stinking M3A1 over here putting some firepower down with that Ma Deuce. He's going to die soon. And that will be the last dance on the hilltop for quite some time. Yeah. Oh, we, we haven't seen Luna like in the late A phase, early B phase, really trade away out efficiently. He had a very good opening. He managed to gain territory. But we've seen new managed to, you know, Restabilize the front line here, but I think the matter of attrition now is really going to go 
into Noob's disfavor because he just doesn't really have a whole lot of good stuff anymore. Even, you know, five minutes left in B phase here. I think it's going to be difficult, especially with Skiega spam because your Skiega pioneers, the Sturm Skiegas, pretty damn cost efficient and rouse a lot of Sturm Gewehrs when I have to deal with. But that's the thing, though. Task Force Butler is one of those groups that you have to be extremely aggressive and extremely, let's say, bulldogish in the early two phases. You don't get a lot on the back end. No, you do not. I mean, you got some pretty good, like, the, the French troops, are, they require a little bit more micro, especially the saboteurs, but what he needs is, you know, dudes in the front line here. I mean, on the hilltop position, he's managing to win because the Mardus is, you know, God's given gun. But he also needs anti-tank to deal with the Marauders. Well, okay, he does have some pack 40s and 6 pounders or 57 mils, which would probably be a good idea for this hilltop position. He needs just some cheap anti-tank. He does. I don't think he's, don't think he's going to get it, though. Um, you know, to the northern side, four more skier squads being deployed on in. And like you said, those Marquis starts... You know, Napoleon bless them will do their best, but this is, I mean, you can't stand up to firepower of you know, 40 dudes running at you all with STGs. Yeah, the real best bet is to use the Molotovs, but you only get two of those, and there's STGs do have rather large 30 round magazines. And who would have thought? I mean, you would have thought that there would have been a, a, a gentle, let's say, proud tradition of a little more of a imbibing, let's call it. And providing for more of those Molotov cocktails, or at least the containers for them, for those Marquis Sards, teetotalers, man, every one of them. Mm-hmm. They're and... holding their fire, waiting for the guys to get real close. Yeah, you have fun with that. Three Stens versus uh, 36 STGs. I, I know where my, my money is. Molotov out. Pick Good up a hit, actually. It is, but I think that's, that's the swan song. Very much the swan song. It's yeah. See, it's real, real bad when you are in a building and the attackers are out in the open and you still take heavier losses. Yeah, gotta love assault rifle. You gotta love it. Yeah, you're absolutely right. Seeing them putting down just a lot of effective firepower here, and I believe the off map is out of charges, and you know the attrition is really starting to show here from Noob. He has you know infantry units scattered around, but against just a concentrated force here from Luna, he's just not going to hold. No. No, he is not. Waiting? Hmm. There's still a, a decent amount of firepower being levied here down south. P-47 is going to go and drop bombs and, and stymie the push for now. Yes, you got a couple stewards moving in. Yes, you got 25 mils and things like that. I'm waiting for the naval for it to be truly, truly devastating, and it's not happening. Northern side, yeah. we have another one that we can actually can call on in here as well. So I feel like the center, it, it usually matters a lot more than what it does in this particular match. We're not seeing it though today. Definitely not seeing it today. Yeah, honestly, Loon doesn't really have to push onto the opposite lung position. If he just sets up good defense along his lung, I mean, he already has a very good defense around the southern hill here. He just needs to start investing in those anti-tank guns, those martyrs. Set up those long range, 75 mil pack, 40 fights, and he's just going to beat out all of Lord's vehicles because there's not really a whole lot left. A lot of 76 mil Shermans are down, so it's really just down to regular Shermans and Wolverine. And Stewards. <laughs> and Stewards. Marauder, in the meantime, throws down bombs to the northern side and obliterates this push. He puts a, he puts a nice little pause on it for right now. Mm-hmm. But the anti-aircraft net here is pretty thick. I mean, you can't really afford to lose any single run of these 37 mil vehicles because you get yeah six of them in total in the division. But that's enough for run V1. Just as long as you micro them effectively, move them every now and again. They are self-propelled. You can cover the entire map. And if you deny those Marauders, well... Noob doesn't have a whole lot of fire support left in his bag of tricks. He's going to have to call out the butler to get him some more. Exactly. Exactly. Watching over here as we have two stewards run up the hill after these rifles. And um, as you might suspect, things go about as well as you would anticipate. I am 
curious to see, will we see a more intelligent naval of effort strike down south? My guess is we'll see an interesting one. We might even go no, after the mortar. Oh no, never mind. He's trying to go for the 25 mil. Or it's okay, it's it's anti-aircraft counter battery, but maybe, I don't know, personally I'm trying to get the pack 40. Yeah. There's only one guy left. The, but I, whether or not I know that, I still would probably kill the weapons platform. That's more important to me. And I would fire one rocket. I wouldn't fire all six. Northern side. Yep, we're continuing the proud tradition, going after a single rifle squad. Hit that flag next time, my friend. Uh, so, some very interesting decisions being utilized here by, by Luna. And again, we know solid player. I think it's just one of those moments every now and again that you kind of get really fixated on a certain piece of the puzzle, and you want to go and solve that piece before you move on to the next one. And artillery is kind of one of those undo buttons. You just kind of fire with reckless abandon, and that will be a much better, much more lasting impression. Yeah, because really what's helped Luna right now, just push his front line, is just the quality of his infantry here. But we're actually seeing that start to fall up a little bit up north, as they have some quality infantry, but that one Stuart with the machine guns is being able to shut that down because the infantry don't have any combined arms fire support to back them up here. So Noob has set up a little, you know, decent little defense line. Well, I say decent, it's really just a sure holding that down. <laughs> well, in the center time here too, we're starting to see a resurgent attempt to really be picking on these lungs. Pushes down and, and kind of really pounds those marquis sides. Mm -hmm. Commandos de Afrique over here. These guys are, are solid, but I mean, they're, they're basically the French version of cavalry scouts, I yep. would argue. And... I think in the defensive positions, he should be good enough. Yeah, I, th I, I would agree. I would agree. JU87, in the meantime, comes in. Not sure what he was trying to kill. Down south, anyway. Hmm. Yeah, not I can't sure. see it either. But down south, I mean, like, noobs is really starting to look a bit lackluster and stuff. Just southern position is... It's just not a whole lot of infantry left. And, you know, as you see time and time again in 1v1s, it's all about that infantry spam. That's why everyone always plays infantry, cavalry, mechanized anymore now. Because you just need that deep tab of elite troops. And he just doesn't really have that anymore. Especially against Skiaker, which has some pretty damn good dudes. I mean, this entire town post has been held from that one bloody Stuart, which is still going to town. Well, unfortunately, the Skiaker squad that could be actually take him out isn't going to jump into that house and would be able to get a nice little bit of a kill there. Mm -hmm. um, actually, they're both squads are going to be picked off here. Uh, and one final barrage I think is going to happen as we see a 25 mil take another full salvo and not get killed just yet. It's going to hold on to dear life long enough. Mies Volsa uh, DO-217 is being brought on and these are the ones with the 40, was it the 40 mil cannons in the front? I'll say there's four of them. Mm -hmm. Not really maybe the most important things right now, but hey, ground attack is ground attack. Oh, I found out what the JU-87 went. There's a dead Stuart in the lungs. Oh. There's a lot of impact craters around it. And with that Stuart dead, three Skiger squads are going to get onto that hilltop, and they're going to be hit by stovepipes pretty quickly. Yeah, it's pretty effective fire support. Yeah, that's at 160 mil. Good God, almost getting all of him stunned here. But once again, it's just coming down to attrition. I mean, he got some good hits. But the infantry uh, is very, very thin. Yes, it is. And at long, there we go. Counter battery going after that mortar. I approve. There we go. That 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 to me is a more lasting, immediate thing. And taking a supply check. Ooh, that's that is very, very unlucky for the mortar. But I like that a lot more. Yeah, and we're seeing the two M10s here as well. I mean, they're pretty deadly. But there's nothing to back them up anymore. It's just coming down to the infantry game, and it's just not looking good. That hill position from Luna is pretty tight at this point. It's not heavily fortified. It's not Fort Knox, but it is a stuck 3G. Well, we know Fort Knox in the first place can be broken into by an overweight man in their U.S. Jar uh, Army General kind of <laughs> uniform. So let's not talk about Fort Knox being the most you know heavily secured thing in the world. Um, but you're right. I mean, M10s over here downtown down are basically just, like, these are the rocks of Gibraltar. These guys are, as long as they have HE shells and Mod 2 Sammo, they will not be stopped. But if you look at one of them right now, um, 
He's got 160 rounds of Ma Deuce and 5 HE. The other one's got two and 160 rounds. So they're, they're starting to run a little bit low there. Yeah, and the stock 3G is going to be able to, you know, engage him one by one just due to how they're positioned here. And also, actually, good use of fire support to actually stress him out to give him the advantage in the tank fight here. I do like that quite a lot. And yeah, considering, you know, how this map is set up, especially down south and in the center, it's all just holding the high ground. Luna's pretty much got it at this point. The lung position has almost fallen. Well, one last Marauder strike, so he's going to go and pound the hilltop, but the M10s are gone. I see the Penta Boys over there, and the, the back of that SPW was able to go and jam the other M10. I think if the other Marauder goes down here, yep, 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 yep. I agree with that. New, new taps. That makes, make, makes perfect sense. And there we go. And looking at the KD, I'd see a pretty, you know, standard 1000 is different share. Yeah. But that really just came down to attrition. Like, it did. just noob stack was... He, he was doing pretty good, like, when he had stuff, but <laughs> he lost the stuff. Like, he, he was honestly, I think he was playing better. He's using combined arms a bit um, more effectively. The Luna was starting to pick up in that a little bit later on, especially with the... Uh, push on the hill of the 410 following through but just having a deep deck of you know scary infantry guys works quite a lot i think is a good reason right to meta i agree i agree um kills over here the off map is actually the most killy thing really overall and losses actually the 172 was pretty killy a single martyr i mean the funny thing is that really no one was super sterling on either side it was just, I feel like, a, a bit of a mishmash the entire way through. Mm hmm. It was, it was actually nice seeing Ski Jaeger. It's been forever since we've seen Ski Jaeger. It's still a pretty decent division. Yes, yes, it is. Any final thoughts there, though, sir? Uh, no. And folks, in that case, then, until next time, I'm Connell Work. I'm Rangaroo. Take it easy.